Hi, this is Doug with Database by Doug, talking about time zones and the date time offset data type today. Um, of course, dates and times are common in our data. It's throughout the data. And dates and times are odd enough all by themselves with different numbers of days per year or uh, different numbers of days in each month. And February has a different number of days from year to year. And uh, when we add uh, the complexity of having time zones, which uh, again are kind of just agreed on boundaries uh, that shift throughout the year. So we might do daylight savings. So um, this is uh, kind of problematic types of data to work with. And it's important to know how it's stored and how to manipulate it within the constraints of these odd uh, time zones and dates and times. So, so um, if I just do a get date, uh, I get back a, a year, month, day, uh, hour, minute, second, millisecond, and I don't know where it is. So it's that is the server time and what the server thinks is the time somewhere. Now, uh, that comes back as a date time data type. Uh, I can prove that by getting the, the type of the data there. Um, but notice that this is what I get. I don't get a time zone with a normal date time data type. Now, the way to think of this uh, date time is as a complex object with multiple parts to it. So rather than think of it as, oh, it must be an, a big int or a floating point number or something like that under the covers, um, don't worry about how it is under the covers. Uh, worry about it as how you have to interact with it. So normally when I get a date time like this, what I do is I can get the different pieces of it part by part using the date part uh, function. And when, what gets returned are the different pieces, and they get returned as integers. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, uh, I left minute out. Um, so I get them as different pieces, no decimals, whole numbers. It's also the same for how I have to manipulate these date times. So notice here I'm getting the date. That's the first column. Here I'm using date add to add two entire days to that get date. So I get October 22nd rather than October 20th at the same time of the day. Here I'm trying to add two and a half days. And notice that I get the exact same value as if I added two days. So it's not letting me add a half of a day in a day format. What I have to do to get two and a half days from now is to nest my date adds. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking get date and adding two days to it. And then I'm taking the result of that and adding 12 hours to it. And here I actually get October 23rd at 4 a.m., which is two and a half days from now. So I'm forced to dealing with this part by part rather than uh, you know in a fractional manner. This is regardless how SQL Server actually does things under the covers. And it's best to use their functions because we could have a breaking change. And if I kind of get under the covers and manipulate things directly, maybe they'll change their representation from uh, version to version. But if I use their functions, then it's their contract with us to make sure that they satisfy their functions. So. Notice that none of this has time zones. To get the time zone, there's a different data type. That data type is called a date time offset. And notice that it looks a whole lot like a date time. It has a year, month, day, hour, minute, second, and milliseconds. But it also has this piece at the end, which is the uh, UTC offset. So universal time coordinated. Uh, and in this case, it's 0, 0, so ostensibly this is Greenwich Mean Time. And what's odd about this is that I happen to know that my database is in uh, SQL, uh, I'm sorry, SQL Azure, and that it's actually in the East Coast uh, Data Center. So uh, I happen to know that this is uh, negative 4 UTC. So 
the way Azure works or the way DB or SQL Azure works is that uh, no matter where it's hosted, if I do a, a sys date time offset and get the the uh, the date time offset value of the server, it's always going to give it as UTZ zero. And uh, you know that's in case I have multiple servers and failover clusters and things like that, where um, all of my servers, even if they're across time zones, would be consistent. So. Um, you might think that uh, when I use something like a to date time offset to convert from a date time to a date time offset that it might actually translate or shift the time uh, when in fact all it really does is just convert the data type and it doesn't affect the time in any way. So here what I'm doing is I'm getting the date and I'm using to date time offset and giving it uh, setting it to be East Coast and there it is and uh, if I do a sys date time offset I get the same value with the same hours. The only difference is that the hour here is shown as UTC 0000, 0, 0, 0 and this is shown as UTC negative 4. So really th these two things are the same except for the time zone and it's also the same if I do uh, a cast or just just to know what cast or convert would do is it basically just gives you UTC 00, zero and it and it converts it to a date time offset and sets that to 00. zero. So to date time offset is like a cast where you can set the time zone uh, along the way or with the same function. So to actually adjust the hours, you need to do something like this. Um, so I'll go ahead and run this. So here is get date as it comes straight from SQL Azure, and I don't know what the time zone is, except I happen to know that it's UTC. You know, in my head, I know that it's UTC 00. If I want to explicitly display that and additionally add the explicit time zone, then I would do a to date time offset and set it to be 00. zero. So there we go. It's the same hour, but I've explicitly said this is UTC 00. zero. Um, if I were to just go ahead and get the date and then adjust the hours uh, by negative 4. So I subtract 4 hours from UTC uh, 00. zero. Uh, that's what I'll get, but again, I haven't really said what time zone this is in. So if I want to shift the hours and then additionally store in that uh, value, this is the time in a particular time zone, then I need to do a date add and then convert it to a date time offset with the appropriate time zone. So this is what you need to do to take something out of a server and shift the time and then store the time zone along with it. There's two operations, shift the time with a date add and then do the to date time offset. And just in summary, this is what sysdate time offset and to date time offset do for you. They just add this piece at the end. So in summary, uh, date time offset is just a date time with additional information. To date time offset converts, but it doesn't add or subtract time. It doesn't actually shift the value of the hours for the time zone. It just provides an extra space to store the time zone. If you want to take something from one time zone and shift it, you need to add or subtract the hours yourself and then um, store the actual time zone along with the time uh, in a date time offset data object. Thanks for watching.